All right, everyone, this is Money Flip here from WatchingTrade.com. This is the weekly webinar going over charts and questions, Sunday night, January the 10th, 8 p.m., getting ready for the week ahead. First off, let me talk about um, the futures. Uh, I'll talk about ES, NQ, the SPX. Right now, I have a chart already up. Um, this is ES. One thing I want you to notice, um, I'm kind of a, a bear in this market right now because the market just keeps on dropping. But with that said, we have one, two, three, four. I'm gonna, I'm gonna count that green candle: four, five, six, seven, eight days down. Okay. In my opinion, a bounce is imminent, so I'm not really looking for shorting the market right here. Um, if you are a person who wants to short the market, I'd be waiting for a bounce before I short it. Uh, with that said, I'm, I'm going to be looking to get long somewhere this week. Uh, but, I mean, this market's been crazy, man. So you can only take it one day at a time. Trying to predict this and predict that, um, probably get burned. But at least I do. So, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> so as you can see, the ES is on the daily. The futures are down right now about 9 points. They were down, I think, 15 or 16. The key level, probably most of you who follow futures understand, key level was 1900. Um, for me, yeah, I would see 1900 break, but I was more so watching 1890 to hold. I think the futures, the ES touched 1893. Yeah, it touched 1893.50. So don't mind some of these fib lines because I got them in here and I got my moving averages. But you can see, man, that thing put in a real nice base at 1893. Uh, so like I said, I was watching the 1890s. I'm going to go back to the daily. Um, and there you have it. Looks like that low right there is 18, we'll just call it 1861. Um if the market does decide to pull even further and gets below 1890, uh, I'm looking for us to come on down to about, you know, 1890. But uh, like I said, I feel like a bounce is coming. The NQ, the, the NASDAQ futures chart is going to look pretty much the same. Once again, uh, you can see. Because I play, I play the Nasdaq. I, I have better luck playing or, or better results playing the Nasdaq. So I watch ES, but I play the Nasdaq more. With that said, you can even see where I had some fib extensions drawn, and it touched right there to a T on the money. That's a six one eight retracement. That's also a one two seven extension. So I'm not telling you you have to use fibs. I'm just saying. Sometimes, you know, if you don't know where something's going, uh, those fibs come in handy, man. So, that's NQ. Uh, just to give you a look at crude, see what it's been doing. Crude still beat down, too. Um, crude keeps setting new lows. Uh, it's down 50 cents right now. Uh, and lately, the market's been following crude. I mean, crude's been down. Uh, the market's been down. But now, my indicators are kind of showing a bounce coming in crude. Um, I kind of feel like it's going to happen, but hey, you just have to watch that every day, uh, and that's why we have the futures. Let me see. Uh, spy. So I have notes on all my uh, on all these tickers that I'm going over. So if you hear me pause, it's because I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> spy. If as you can see, and I'm leaving all these fib levels on here because I, I like to see where things have gone. It's been Gap City the last, you know, the last week. Uh, ugly candle on Friday, right here. Came down, got into that seven, seven, eight, six retracement. Uh, my next stop for spot, if it goes lower, my next stop is 190. Okay, that's that's the next level I would be looking for. Uh, 190, 189. Okay, and then here. You're looking at 186, uh, basically 187. So that's one take on the spot. I'm going to jump in these charts. I think I have somewhere around about 10 or 11, and I got some messages for a couple more. So just bear with me. I won't hang on the charts a lot because, you know, I got quite a few to get through. So one of my first ones. Oh, and let me say this. Um, a lot of the charts that I'm seeing 
look like shorts, but in my view, some of them are too late to short. Uh, I would I would more so wait for a bounce on them and then get short again along watching the market. But the majority of my tickers, I'm looking at more of a short setup, but I do have a few in here that I'm looking at for longs. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in them. CYBR. Sorry. CYBR, you can see it. Um, I've got a very fast MACD down here that I also use for uh, intraday trading, which works quite well. So if anybody can see that and wants to use those numbers or hit me up, I can I can email them to you or something. But I, I use it quite a bit intraday. Um, but it's very fast. It's not it's not lagging like the other numbers. Uh, it does lag a little bit, but not like the other ones. Um, you can see C CYBR has had a hard time. Uh, you can see these levels right here. You know, it's pretty much at a crucial support level, basically 3750. Okay, um, pretty much if it CYBR keeps on pulling down below 38, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, that's gonna be, that's gonna be real key. But with that said, with that said, the other major ones such as FTNT, they look like they look horrible as well. FTNT is setting new lows. This is another cybersecurity stock. Um, and the other one, which I used to play a lot to the long side, but the last time when it broke its trend, PANW, they all look bad. The whole sector of cybersecurity looks bad. So cybersecurity stocks are ones of these three that just by judging by things, whenever these, these bounce a little bit, I'm looking to get short those. Uh, either sell the premium or take some verticals or whatever. And the other thing I've noticed is that because I watch cybersecurity stocks a lot, is that anytime there's a major breach in like a bank or Target or something like that, cybersecurity stocks just, I mean, they tank bad. Uh, they have a really bad, uh, really bad day or two. The other thing about you take CYB, uh, PANW right here, that green moving average is the 8 EMA. When that 8 EMA crosses under my 21, uh, it's it's starting to get ugly. And when it crosses the rest of them, it's real ugly. So I pretty much have a trend change on PANW. So I'm pretty much going to short the pops on that one. Uh, same as CYBR. Looking like a trend change there. And this one is even closer. So as you can see where my pencil is, right there, I mean, yeah. It's coming on back down again. Look at the MACD down at the bottom. Uh, so cybersecurity looks looks terrible. Moving on, Nike. Um, I called Nike in chat on Friday, and I should have already, I should have already been watching Nike, but I, I, I ran across Nike on some uh, unusual options activity. There was a big order on puts, and so I grabbed some, and then I happened to notice that Nike was in gap field territory. So my target to sell Nike. Um, I did quite well on Friday with it, held it overnight, so I will be getting out of Nike tomorrow, whether it keeps going down or if it goes up because it hit my target. Now, I do have several cons on it, so I could take some off, maybe leave you know a couple to run, but it's pretty much um, at my target. My target is 58.50, okay, which would be gap fill. Uh, 58.50, gap fill is that candle right there. The high of that candle is 5855 so I just say 5850 and that's my target for Nike but as I said before a lot of stocks are like they're trend changing um, and I'm a, I'm a trend trader when I swing trade I trade the trend Nike had a long uptrend for quite a while um, one of my favorite stocks as well but you know I'm playing the chart so that's my take on Nike this is one I found by accident uh, I love bullish and bearish engulfing candles. Okay, uh, for those that don't know, whenever a candle covers the previous day candle, top to bottom like that, 
basically that candle fits inside of the uh, the the last candle that's that's an engulfing candle in it engulfs the whole thing um i really like to play those a lot uh usually they last about a day maybe two days so i may be looking to depending on the market i may be looking to take a quick short on this one um as a day trade tomorrow but that's hbi um has a bearish engulfing candle i like it for some continuation uh for some continuation to the downside. Let me let me take a check on that to see if that one has options. Yes, it has it has monthly options. So this week would be monthly expiration. Uh, so you got five days on the Januarys. The four the the Februarys are forty days out. So I don't normally like to play monthly options when I do intraday, but if that monthly expiration is that week, then it's basically a weekly. So yes, that one does have options. You might want to look at some of the volume on it, but it looks like, uh, yeah, it had quite a bit of volume on Friday. Looks like it had 1,800 calls and almost 3,300 puts on Friday. Volume traded. Okay, so that's HBI. I like that one for a short. Uh, into tomorrow just got to watch it with the market and see what it does but I'm looking for continuation <laughs> next one um, this next one is blue okay now I'm pretty much watching blue because I'm really trying to step up my game on intraday trades and day trades with unusual options activity there was a very very aggressive um, call buyer and I'd have to go back and check my other notes but I'm just watching blue um, Watch it yourselves just to kind of see that, hey, big aggressive call buyer on Friday, um, it may pop. I don't know. But the other thing, is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up that chart on UA. The other thing is, this is a pattern in blue that, yeah, I saw the call buying, but this is an H pattern. Now watch my mouse. I'm going to move it slowly. See this right here? You come down, it's the, it's the lowercase letter H, okay? It comes down, it rises back up, and then comes down again. Normally with that pattern, I'm like, mm, I want to get short. But when I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn more of the, the aggressive call or, or put buyers to see what the stock does. Uh, but if I didn't know that, I'd be like, look, this looks like a short for me, okay? So that is blue. Oh wow, Kev, man, gosh. How did I miss that? That's just nasty. <laughs> that is nasty. Um Yeah. I mean it, the chart says everything on that one. UA's trend has changed. Uh it's in a heavy downtrend. This is one that um on on bounces, I, I gotta get some uh to the short side. The other thing is um um, and yeah, I, I like that idea on the short puts. I, I don't, I don't really see this coming down too much right now. But I mean, I, I can always be wrong. Um, and U, UA is one of my favorites, man. I, I love that company. Uh, but anyway, you got a nasty looking candle on on Monday. I mean, on Friday. And like I said, I'm looking for a bounce this week. Uh, so that that's a that's a really nice. Uh, looking area to load up so I like that Kev, Kev likes the $60 to $70 as a zone for him to uh, load up with the monthly chart entering the buy zone so that was UA okay next Tesla this is a company that I really like as well um, and man, this thing is coming down into the buy zone for me. Um, you can see that fib line. You can see the support, uh, that 786 retracement. Uh, I mean, you pretty much got support down there at the 204 level. You're sitting at 211 even right now. Uh, and Tesla, man, when that thing when that thing moves and, and decides he wants to move for real, I mean, 
the thing moves really good. Uh, so if Tesla keeps on coming back, um, Tesla's also one of those stocks that kind of will do its own thing. So there's days when the market can be, you know, the Dow can be down a couple of hundred points. Um, and that thing can, you know, it can do its own thing and go the opposite way. So that's Tesla, as you can see on the chart, looking at about a 204 uh, support level. So I'd, let, I'd like for this one to come on back a little bit, but uh, me, I'm a long-term bull on, on Tesla. So that's my take on Tesla. <laughs> yeah, so far as... as uh, so for the comment on, on Nike, I, I bought puts on Nike, and I'm already looking to get out tomorrow. So, you know, somebody selling puts on Nike, that's a, that's a bullish call. I mean, to each his own. Uh, but, I mean, it, we're at a point where um, I, it's, it's hard for me to short stuff down here. I'd wait for a bounce before shorting again. And we are well overdue for a bounce. So that's my take on Tesla. Um, I don't think she comes down much further. Has good support down around 204. So that's Tesla. Uh, next one. Looks like a dog to me. Oracle, she's beat down. Uh, this used to be one of my favorite stocks, but I mean, as you can see, going all the way back to June, it just been straight downhill. Got a good bounce uh, mid to late October. But the thing about Oracle right now, uh, watch this. See that line? Oracle busted its support. So for me, uh, I don't like this IV percentile, which you can see in the upper left corner of my screen. IV percentile is a script, and I won't get into this right now, but you can find it. I actually had to pay for it, but you can find it out on the Internet. Um, usually, that determines if I sell premium or if I buy premium on the swing trade. Okay, um, I like to sell premium when it's up above 60%. If I'm at 50 or below, uh, especially like 40 in that area, that's when I like buy premium. So... Uh, that's what that is but Oracle has broken a critical support so that's one of those I'm looking for that if it bounces an Oracle closed on the lows okay 3461 was the low uh, lower day on Friday it closed at 3465 so that's that's not a good sign and that's Oracle set. next one is a request on GE um, Kev, Kev has his take on GE as well. Uh, I like GE as a long-term stock, not something. Uh, I mean, you can. I can like something long-term bullish, but if I see the, the opportunity to to sell, I mean, uh, go short buying puts or something, I will. Okay, I'm waiting for GE to bounce down here. I'm looking. I'm watching this 50% retracement level. Then I'm watching the 618, and when GE reverses. That's that's when I'm gonna get long on it. Uh, for the person who's in this, who's been taking heat, I mean, if if you're planning on holding this, you know, you know, a few years or something like that, kind of like Kev with with Whole Foods and a few others, um, then you know, these are dip buying opportunities. So wait until that thing finds a, a base, and you know, if I'm a long term holder on this and I'm holding this for years, um, this is one that I'm gonna wait for it. To come on down a little bit more, and I'm going to add to my position, but that's just me. Um, GE has been a stock that holds up quite well, whatever the market conditions. Okay, um, and even when you go back to the August 24th quote-unquote flash crash, GE held up just fine, uh, in my view, compared to a lot of other stocks. Now, right now, it's pulling, well, it's pulling quite a bit. So, watch the 50% retracement that basically 28 level because you're at 2845 right now uh, GE doesn't make wild moves a 50 cent move for GE is a lot so it made 50 50 cents on Friday looks like it was probably down about 45 cents on Thursday uh, so that's my take if I was long term on GE I'd be buying when it keeps as it keeps on uh, when it finds the bottom I'd be buying some more to go long on There was one other thing, I'm sorry, there's one other thing that I had in my notes. I use an indicator called the squeeze. 
And a lot of times when that squeeze fires, I get another day or two. So I'm looking for according now, that's just according to the to the indicator, which is one that I have in the middle called TTM squeeze. Um that would signify that it's going to pull just a little bit more. But like I said, I think the market's gonna bounce this week, so GE should come with it. The next one LXFT. This one, let me blow this up for you. Boom. Baby bear flag right here. Okay. Consolidated and broke out of that flag again. Okay. So that's your pole. That's your flag. And we broke out of the I broke out of it. So the bear flag broke. Um for me, I love the flags. Uh, that's a short setup for me. Okay, uh, any pops on that one? I got I got to get some. And also, this, as I've mentioned to people before, my moving averages are based off of Fibonacci, and I love the way they work for me. Okay, the first two are eight and a twenty-one. Then I use a what, a thirty-five, fifty-four, and an eighty-nine, something like that. I always forget the numbers, but anyway, uh, this, this bottom moving average is an eighty-nine, but it's, it's based off of Fibonacci. <laughs> Um, but the 8 and the 21 are the most important. You can see the 8 has crossed under the, the 21 and the other two moving averages as well. So any pops on this one, I like it for a short. Now, it is a low-volume stock, so that's not something that I'm really just buying naked, naked options on. I usually like to try and you know find me a good spot for a vertical on that, like a vertical spread. Um, yeah, pretty much a vertical debit is what is the best thing looking at the IV percentile but I'd have to dig more into the options so anyway LXFT uh, trend change uh, broke out of a bear flag to the downside so I, I, I look for more downside coming next is NTES I've played this stock a few times before um, had a very nice uptrend looks like that uptrend has topped out because you've been going up ever since let's just call it the, you know the mid September ever since mid September that thing has been you know a very nice uh, trend up with that said that trend has pretty much topped out it's coming back down I actually liked also down here I had a squeeze so the squeeze is when the red dots are there that means you have you have a move coming when the dots are red okay when those dots come out of the red and go green then the move starts not always but most of the time that's what happens okay so we had a daily squeeze um, and then it fired short okay along with the MACD in indicator uh, I like this one to keep on coming down so uh, NTES looks like it it topped out quite a bit so I'll be watching this one for more downside action that's NTES uh, decent volume 1.3 million so um, you should be able to find some volume in that one all right here we go this is one of my favorites to trade I like the company I like the stock okay but boy this is I'm waiting to see what happens right here because Facebook has just been holding this little what is that Facebook basically holding at 97 level two days in a row uh, I was wrong on Facebook earlier uh, about a week or so ago I was hoping Facebook or looking for Facebook to break out of that consolidation where I just moved the mouse that's your consolidation uh, it didn't break to the upside it broke to the downside so now I'm looking at these fibs and also uh, support levels which you've got a major support at that 618 a little bit before the 618 right in there okay so about 96 uh, if Facebook pulls anymore I'm watching for it to hold at 96 level if it dips under it and regains it so that's what I'm looking for on Facebook um, but everything is beat down so I kind of got to be careful about whether I'm short bias and long bias on the stocks uh, but I like I still I, I'm still a fan of Facebook 
stock. Um, if she pulls on back down to about the 96, 95 level, I'm buying. Uh, and that's when I'm, I'm rocking long term because uh, with their monetization on their advertising, they actually give Google a run for their money. Uh, and I, I just know that from being an SE, SEO person back in the day. Uh, so that's my take on Facebook. I do also like to trade Facebook intraday, no matter the trend. But those are the levels I'm watching for. Watch that 97 level on Facebook. This one I didn't. The next one is LinkedIn. You guys probably already know who asked for LinkedIn, but <laughs> wow, man, I I, I got to keep up better. LinkedIn filled the gap right there. And LinkedIn looks just like Facebook almost uh, with the last two days, and some of these tech stocks do that. But that's LinkedIn is at a crucial support level. I mean, because the gap was filled, it's basically sitting right here at the 217 level. Um, I'm going to watch for LinkedIn. I got to put this one back on my radar. I'm going to watch for LinkedIn to either bounce with the market or keep on coming down. Uh, and LinkedIn, when it, it, makes, it can make some serious moves. So for me, LinkedIn is crucial just like Facebook. Are we, is it going to bounce or is it going to keep on coming on down? Uh, with that support level right there, so watch that 217 level. Actually, actually 216, it, and it's ugly. Your low on Friday was 215.01. So uh, that's always been one of my key levels um, is watching a break of the previous day's low or high. But LinkedIn, I'm really, I'd be really watching this one at 2 216. 216 and I feel like 217 could break. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it even closed at basically 216. So 215 is your most crucial level. Sometimes I got to zoom in on these charts to get better reads on the levels. So uh, LinkedIn under under over 215. She gets under 215. Uh, I think that one's gonna give you a nice run for your money on on the, on the put side. Uh, yeah, I didn't have Netflix on my list, but I'll flash it right quick. Disregard the fibs, because that's a, sometimes I I go fib crazy when I'm looking at different levels on different charts. But uh, just like Booney pointed out, same thing with uh, Netflix. But Netflix is a little bit more ugly for me. I'd be looking at the basically 110 111 on uh yeah i'd be looking at 111 on netflix uh, i always like to give them a little room to move but netflix gets under 111 but the thing about netflix was when you let me do something right quick folks this is i, I hate it when all this stuff is on my charts All right, this candle right here was news on Netflix. Netflix just ran, I mean, really ran. And I told people, because I made a watch list the next day, I said, watch for Netflix to cool off a bit. Now, even without drawing my fibs, I can clearly see that the bottom on that red candle from Friday is 50% of that big green candle on Wednesday, okay? So if you get any type of market bounce, I feel like Netflix is going to run too. But Netflix is just like uh, Tesla. Netflix will do its own thing regardless of the market. Okay, just because the market's down doesn't mean Netflix is down. Okay, the market can be ripping and Netflix is selling off. So a lot of times I like to watch stocks like that because I like to have some stocks that don't do what the market does. But anyway, um, watch Netflix to gain a little traction, especially along with the market. And as well, my indicators are pointing up, even though you have those couple, of, but those are lacking indicators. So anyway, that's my take on Netflix. Even though I didn't have it on my on my list for tonight, uh, I just decided to pull it up because somebody asked for it. Uh, I've got about five more tickers. LMT, Lockheed Martin, 
Um, I'm in this one. I got a butterfly. If the market doesn't bounce, that butterfly is not going to be too good. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm in the hole on it because I got it at a good price. But I want to say I haven't really made anything on it. But the thing about these butterflies, once they get close to expiration and they go to what is called the body of the butterfly, uh, you can really profit good. So uh, butterflies, I kind of like them a lot, especially in high volatility. To me, it's easier to swing a butterfly in high volatility versus something like a vertical debit spread or a vertical credit spread. So, well, I, I take that back about the vertical credit spread, the vertical debit spread. So anyway, um, I feel like Lockheed Martin is at a uh, a good support area. Okay, as you can see, it's been holding up well. Just run that. Just look at that crosshair. Uh, so if there's any market bounce, Lockheed will do quite well this week for me. Uh, if the market keeps on tanking, eh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take the full loss on that on that butterfly or just scrap it for whatever I can get out of it. Next one. Next one is H A. Ah, I know why I had this one on here. Another flag, okay? A bear flag. Uh, some of these patterns really help, especially when swing trading. So here's your pole. Here's your here's your flag right here. Uh, if that thing pushes on to the downside, uh, that could be that can wind up being a nice trade. I'm going to do something for you guys, just a second. This is rough. This is not exact. Because when I want it exact, I go in and I set the numbers. That's a 50% that's a retracement off of the, the latest swing low to the swing high. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'm going to remove that. Sometimes I do that just to see. Um, sorry. So anyway, the pattern. It's looking like a flag right here, a bear flag. If it busts on down and comes out of that bear flag, that should be a nice opportunity for a short. And that's Hawaiian Holdings, um, HA. What's the volume on Friday? Yeah, decent volume for that. Uh, 1.3 million, so not bad. Um, DY, sorry, I've been long on DY, DY normally does well, uh, it's pretty much kind of holding the support level, as you can see DY had a really, really, really strong uptrend, uh, that trend kind of changed, I'm waiting to see if it's going to regain that trend just because of the market volatility that we've had, uh, so DY is, is one of those, it's a slow mover, but also at the same time, it will do its own thing regardless of the market. Um, you know, you see what happened with the market on Friday. DY was up a buck twenty-four. Okay, so uh, that's DY. It's also on IBD's top fifty. At one point, it was on their top twenty. But I've I've been watching DY for a long time. So that's DY. Next, Google, Amazon, and CBS. And these two, I really have on my watch to the long side. Three, I'm sorry. Google. Um, as you can see, I have my fibs drawn on this one as well. Um, I like Google, especially if we bounce. You can see the yellow fib retracement line. And the other thing is, see my crosshair right here? Back up at this candle at the 618. That 618 retracement is to a T at the low of that gap up right there, okay? Um, so if Google does pull a little bit more, uh, and I'm kind of happy Google and Amazon are pulling because I, I've been wanting to get long these stocks, but I just, I couldn't buy them up at those levels. You know, Google hit basically 800 bucks. Google's back down to, what, 730? So it's 70, 70 bucks off of its, its high is 70 bucks in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 basically a week and a half seven trading days so um, Amazon looks pretty much the same way but Google was down 10 bucks on 
um, Friday. The other thing is Google has earnings February the first, three weeks away. Uh, yeah, is that three weeks? Something like that. But anyway, I like Google. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna wait for that one to see if it pulls just a little bit more. But when I see like a short uh, uh, a short term turnaround in the market, Google and Amazon are two that I really have on my radar. And I'll pull up Amazon here right now. Amazon looks just like Facebook. Okay, Amazon held held it right there. Okay, I'm gonna pull this crosshair down just a little bit. Look at that gap. Five ninety five. Yeah, pretty much looking at five ninety five. Um, I'd be watching six hundred to hold. That's a nice psychological level. I'd be looking for five ninety five to six hundred to hold. Uh, market participation. I like Amazon and Google back to the upside. And Amazon is what? Amazon's even further down than Google. Amazon is basically 90 bucks off of its highs. So that's that's a that's a huge move on Amazon. So for me, those kind of look like um, buying opportunities. I'm looking at these indicators. They're looking ready, looking like they're ready, getting ready to curl back up. So like I said, I really like Amazon and Google to the long side with the market participation. All right, and the last one that I have for you tonight. I, man, I love this one right here. Is CBS. The reason I like CBS is because on that swing low to a swing high, which is how you drop your fibs. Okay, swing low to swing high, vice versa. And you can do shorter swing lows, but it always has to be to the ultimate high or the ultimate low. 3851 was the ultimate low. Okay, this latest swing high is right there in this last latest trend. Okay, as you can see, without a doubt. Um, it's holding the 50% real good. Uh, when it holds like that, I keep them on watch to see what they do. Remember what happened in the market on Friday? Um, CBS was up a, a buck. CBS is not a stock that moves a buck all the time. Okay, well, a buck or less is its pretty much average daily range. But um, also, and y'all remember that I, I showed you this chart because if it, it comes to flourishing. I can say I told you so, but I hate when people tell me that, so I don't tell other people that. See this right here? The squeeze is going red, okay? When it comes out of that, CBS is going to go one or the other way. It's either going up or it's going down. I like it to go up, okay? Had nice volume on Friday. Um, one of the fast, the, the, the fast indicator on the MACD is um, curling back up, so... With that move on Friday, I really like CBS to the long side. Okay? And on that note, I will leave you with this. Those are your futures right now. That's your ES. Um, sitting at $18.99.25. So be prepared. Um, I don't like what the indicators are showing me right now, so hopefully this stuff changes overnight, or America, the American markets just say, screw China, we're going back up. Uh, that's what I would like to see, but uh, we got we got a few hours, so we'll see what's happening. Are there any questions, any more charts you want me to look at? If not, um, thank you guys for the participation. This will be uh, uploaded and rendered tonight. There will be timestamps on the YouTube video, so if there was a ticker that you wanted to, to, to look at, if you go into the description on the YouTube channel, you can see, for example, Facebook was at minute 25, 25 minutes and 28 seconds into the webinar, so be sure and look at that. I got you, Bowler. I'm going to look at that one right now for you. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I've got. So that was that was about the video on YouTube. Like I said, that'll be on Kev's channel. Man, how did I miss this one? I've had this one on watch before. Uh, let me do something. 
Yeah, as you can see from all my drawings, I had this on watch a while back. Look, I'm going to do one thing. Just to show you guys something, when I talk about the squeeze indicator, and I've never shared this with anybody, okay? Um, see right here? I had this one on watch back when it was in this area because I was looking at this. Now, look at my crosshairs. See where those red dots are? Watch what happens when those red dots end, okay? When those red dots start to end and those Mac, that MACD is coming up, boom. TSO shoots up to the upside, okay? Um, I don't like to use stuff like this, okay? That 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 was back in August with the with the so-called flash crash, as people like to call it. I don't call it that. I call it a correction. Uh, um, the other thing is, if I were to extend this trend line here, it's like that trend line just broke. Or, or channel line, I should say. That's just the trend line out of the channel. It looks like it broke. I don't like that candle on Friday. That's another bearish engulfing candle. Um, looking at my indicators, it looks like this thing wants to come on down some more. Um, if it were to do that, yeah, 101.62. If this thing keeps pulling, and you got earnings right around the corner as well, um, sometimes stocks like to sell off right into earnings. Sometimes they will run up into earnings. Uh, so that's one thing I always watch, especially rolling into earnings season, which, by the way, I think starts this week. Uh, I would have to go back and look. Usually, quote unquote, when Alcoa kicks off, um, Alcoa reports that kicks off the earnings season, which their ticker is AA. Uh, so if anybody wants to watch. But this one right here, man, uh, for me, with that candle, I actually look for this one to come a little bit lower, okay? That's just, that's just my take on it, all right? Uh, so that's Tesoro Corporation TSO. Any more? Ah, I know what I want to show you. Oh, I think I already went over that. It was oil. I went over crude. I went over the crude futures. Just for those who... Yeah. I remember uh, a person that I was talking to in chat. I had I had been swinging USO for months. Um, and we had a talk when USO had broke under... I want to say under 12. And we were like, is it going to 10? And I said, man, I don't think it's going to 10. I said, I think it'll go to 11. And here we are, 971. I did not think it was going that low. Uh, so that's USO for you. Um, I do like USO later down the road uh, for oil to rebound over the next couple of years. So those of you who are longer longer term traders, uh, you know that's that's just one that I'm looking at. That's just me. All right. Anything else? Um, last thing I do want to say is I post a lot of news. Um, for those who do follow me on Twitter, um, that's where I, I post a lot of it because it's a little difficult and time consuming for me to post in both places. Um, and you can always go back and get it. I'm not, I'm not saying that to get Twitter followers. I'm just saying that that's where I post a lot of news. And man, a lot of times in the mornings when that news is popping, I may have 30 tweets on the news. Uh, I try to post the most important news in the chat relevant to what other traders are trading. So if I get anything on Apple or Tesla, LinkedIn, things like that, DE, CAT, um, um, I always post them in the chat. So um, I try to keep up with the news as well. Uh, that helps you in case you are in a trade. You need to know about that kind of stuff. And uh, watch, some of the, watch some of the global news because the global news is affecting our markets. Any questions? Going once, going twice, gone. All right, guys, get prepared. Have a great week. Uh, this video will be uploaded tonight. All right, good luck. Happy trading. Peace.